Well, hi de ho everybody and welcome back to another installment of Dan's Pro Shop. Today, we are installing airlift airbag leveling system. I, I don't know if that's what... You get the point here. Airbags over the rear axle on a 2024 Chevy Silverado 3500. Now, the whole point of this, especially if you have an HD truck, it's not necessarily to increase load capacity. It's to increase stability in handling while hauling or towing. The whole point of this is whenever you put a bunch of tongue weight on your truck via the, the regular bumper hitch or a gooseneck or a fifth wheel, your truck is going to want to squat and that takes it away from the OE configuration and geometry. You know how brakes work. You get 70% of the braking power on the front axle and 30% on the rear. So the more weight you take off of the front, the less braking and steering capabilities you have. The whole point of this thing is to bring the back end of that truck back up to its stock ride height so you get all of your braking and steering control. So if you guys are interested in this particular install, stick around and let's see how this thing goes on. So guys, like I mentioned, this particular kit is made by Airlift. This is the Airlift 59000 kit number 89341. And obviously this fits a bunch of different models and everything. This just happens to be a 24 Silverado 3500. I got this particular set from Amazon, but you can get it from a bunch of different places. E-Trailer, whatever. Actually, E-Trailer is really great. It's just I already had stuff set up through Amazon and free shipping and all that and everything. Don't worry, I'll add all the links in the description in case you're interested in this particular kit. Now, if you guys have looked into doing stuff like this before, there are a bunch of different companies that make airlift systems like this. But I have personally used name brand airlift in the past, and I genuinely enjoy them. They are a quality product. They have a good service backing and everything. The company is just a real joy to work with. And they just make a good product. This thing is awesome. There's a bunch of accessories. Like you can get like an onboard air pump that's remote controlled and gauges and this and that. This particular kit, I opted to upgrade to the stainless braided lines, which I think is a well worth it investment. Because these kits normally come with just a, like a quarter inch polyurethane tubing, which is fine. I mean, semi trucks run unguarded polyurethane hosing all the time. But this is something that I never, ever, ever want to get under there in service for the rest of the time that I have this vehicle. So I opted for the stainless braided lines. And we're going to get under there and route everything. And I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do because I've done this before. In my last truck, particularly, I did this exact same thing. So let's get into this kit and see what it's all about. This is pretty straightforward. There's not much going on here. And in case you guys are interested... I just put a B&W flip ball gooseneck on this truck as well as a factory GM wiring harness to control that fifth wheel. If you guys are interested, check out the link up here to see those videos and don't worry, I'll link them in the description also. But this one comes with a big old packet of instructions, everything, a nice decal because you can never have too many stickers for the beer fridge. We got the hardware packet here. Even though I opted for the stainless braided lines, it still comes with the original polyurethane in case for whatever reason you want to do that. All stainless hardware and a galvanized steel exhaust shield. And just in case you guys are wondering, this is probably the first thing to go because I have had to replace them before. But you can buy replacements on Airless website for like nothing. I think it's like three bucks. Anyway, we got the stock hardware, the stainless braided lines, airbag and dude, these things are quality this is like it comes off of a peterbilt same stuff it's good meaty stuff got stainless end caps for these things because we opted for the stainless kit oh a bunch of brackets and u-bolts and oh there's all kinds of good stuff in here let me lay it out on the table so you can see what all's going on and you can see what's in this kit and then we'll start getting into it well, here you have it, fella. All the contents of ye old box out on the table. So we got the two airbags, as expected. Stainless end caps for both of these. This, there's an orientation for all this stuff. Bottom bracket. 
and mm -hmm. top bracket that will like uh, go around the factory jounce bumper. You'll see what I mean when we get under there. These are the brackets that go underneath the axle and hold this thing to the axle. Factory hardware kit, stainless lines, U-bolts and more hardware and stuff and instructions. The only thing left to do is actually start wrenching. But step one for this, just because uh, I'm a big guy and uh, yeah, whatever, we're gonna jack this thing up, remove the spare tire and take the rear tires off. You do not have to do this step, but I choose to because it makes this so much easier. So uh, I'm not gonna bore you with watching me spin lug nuts off, so movie magic. Alrighty campers, phase one of this is complete. Drop your spare tire. I've gone over how to do this. You need your key to do that. Like I said, check out the gooseneck video if you want to see the process. It's as straightforward as it can possibly be. Rip off your rear tires. Jack this thing up, but not too much. I just want like two clicks up on the jack stance because we're going to need to relax the suspension on this thing. So make sure you don't outrun the travel of your floor jack because eventually we're going to put the floor jack up under the hitch here and relax the leaf springs to allow some more room to get these airbags in between the axle and the bottom of the frame rail. Now keep in mind, because we have the rear tires off the ground, chalk the front tires. You know, this is a simple weekend project. You don't want to get dead in the process. And if you're unfortunate enough like me to be working in a low ceiling garage like this, and the garage isn't deep enough to get this freaking bus in here, if, uh, if your cab is sticking out the door, Make sure you don't jack it up into the door frame. Ask me how I know this. I didn't do it on this particular one, but the last one, yeah, I got a nice crease right along the top of the roof there. Anyway, learn from my mistakes. Don't do it. Pay mind to what you're doing. You're on your own time. Take your time, right? So the next thing we got to do is get up under there. We'll just grab your favorite flathead screwdriver, and we got to rip out the factory jounce bumpers from on top of the axle. Couldn't be any easier, but you're gonna get a little greasy. So you wanna grab some gloves? By all means, you do you guy, but let's get in there and do that. Alrighty, in case you are unaware what I mean by jounce bumper, that is this guy right here. It's just, uh, I don't know, some kind of polyurethane or silicone, and it's just pressed up into this socket right here. So all we need to do is get up in here with a flathead screwdriver and pry this thing out, and the same on the other side. Come on, you little devil. Come on. You know you want it. There you go. Come on. Ah! Cool. Now you got a nice dog toy laying around. <laughs> now, according to the book, the next thing we have to do here is remove some factory hardware from the rear axle. If you guys are familiar with these things, there is a hard L bracket that mounts on to the rear axle that holds your brake line from where it goes to steel to rubber. We need to remove that thing because the bracket's going to be in the way of it. Don't worry, we're going to reinstall this. The brackets on the airlift system have a threaded hole to reinstall all this stuff. It just needs to be moved so we can get that stuff in there. So next step is actually getting under it. All right, guys, I know this is going to be difficult to see, but right here is the bracket that we're talking about. There's simply just a 13 mil bolt that holds this into the lower leaf bracket. Get yourself a wobble socket to make this a lot easier. Yank that thing out and that gives us room to put the lower bracket for the airbag. We'll do the same thing on the passenger side. The next part of this is there are two wire looms here attached to the bottom of the bracket that we just removed. There is a small diameter wire and a large diameter wire. We need to remove the large diameter wire because this allows room for the bracket and the hardware and this and that. No big deal, it will be reinstalled, but the easiest way to do this is grab yourself a pair of needle nose and pinch the plug from the top. It's just one of those little retaining clips that you know we all usually break. But if you're lucky enough to be working on a new rig like this, chances are you'll get it out on the first go. So we just need to pull this thing out and get it out of the way. Same thing on passenger. All right, now that we have some of our under the truck prep actually done, the next step is doing some pre-assembly on the airbag kit itself. 
we're going to go ahead and put the end caps on and like i mentioned if you get this kit they're stainless so i strongly recommend so then you don't have to worry about nothing especially here in the old keystone state everything rots out in the very first winter so we're doing our best to try to prevent that so we're going to get some hard work come over here and put it together Alrighty. so according to the book the first thing that we need to do is grab yourself an airbag and the side with the three ports there's a side over here just with some riv nuts that's for holding the bottom bracket this is the top of the airbag we have the two bracket holes and then the hole for the actual air fitting so according to this thing that's where we're starting take one of your end caps they're both the same it doesn't matter slap that thing on there and then it wants us to install the air fitting now cool for us there's already teflon installed on these things so the way that they want you to do this is crank this thing in there until it is hand tight like as much as you can do with your fingers and then grab yourself a half inch wrench and do an additional one and a half turns because this thing is pipe thread so you don't really need to kill it you just need to make it tight so take note to where you started we'll do one and a half and honestly you'll feel it that's sufficient now once you have your air fitting on we need to install the top bracket these are very different and it's difficult to mess them up the top one has this u-shape that will go around the jounce bumper bracket that's still attached to the frame there ain't nothing we can do about that but there is a cutout here for the air fitting so this only goes on one way you can't mess it up once this thing straddles the air fitting like that the holes up top will be exposed to you and they are tapered to accept these countersunk hex drive bolts so i strongly suggest grabbing yourself some blue loctite because like i said i don't want to do this again i don't want to have to worry about my hardware coming loose after 10,000 miles so give yourself a healthy dose of blue loctite and a 732 allen that will drive this whole thing together we'll put it together with our uh, electric ratchet and then go back over once we have everything put together and torque this stuff down to spec there is a spec perhaps an extension will help you out with this and it helps if you go the right way now the reason i am stressing the torque spec is because we are putting a stainless steel bolt into a brass fitted nut not only are they two dissimilar metals that don't particularly like each other and that nut is fixed into the plastic on the top of the airbag so number one if you over tighten it you run the risk of stripping out the threads in the brass rib nut number two if you over tighten it not only can you pull the threads out but you can pull that rib nut out of its plastic setting so pay mind to this torque spec do it right so now that we have the top bracket installed minus the torque flip this thing over and we're going to install the bottom bracket now this is the same thing it has countersunk holes in here but you see that there are two different sets of holes that's because the bracket for the driver and the passenger are the same for ease of manufacturing i can only surmise however we need to pay mind to driver and passenger so there is a difference in this top bracket you see how you have a wide chunk and a small chunk now whenever we put this thing together we need to pay mind to which is where because that determines driver and passenger we need to favor the little side so this thing is going to be offset towards the small ear this is important because this is what changes these things from driver to passenger so make sure you do it correctly and whenever you do the other airbag it's going to be a mirror image it's going to do the same thing just make sure you favor the small side nice now we have both of our brackets put together and you guys can easily see that you can't screw this up they are mirror images of each other they only go together one direction so the next step is according to the book those eight bolts that we just put in this thing 20 foot pounds grab your favorite torque wrench and get to torquing like i said this is important do not overdo these and make sure that they're not loose either 
Now, if you guys are like me and you're more worried about filming than actually doing the job correctly, you may have forgotten to put the stainless plate underneath of the, the other bracket. So, in that case, you need to take it apart and make sure you put that thing on there. So, don't forget about that. <laughs> now we can do our final torque again. So, once you have everything finally put together correctly without forgetting anything, this is what we're looking at. This is the orientation they're going to be in there. This is the driver side top, passenger side top. So you got bracket, plate thing, airbag, plate thing, bracket. Make sure you don't do what I did. <laughs> All right. According to the book, the next step here is they want you to extend your suspension. They want you to relax it as much as you can in order to give you as much room as you can in between the axle and the frame rail. Please, please, please be careful while doing this. You do not want to relax it so much that you take the axle off of your jack stands. You just want to see the truck body rise but not the axle. Just pay mind and please take your time while doing this part. So, once you go and get yourself a popsicle after taking a face plant off the porch, make sure that you have your suspension relaxed as much as you can. So, just so happens I have a long reach, one of those Daytona Harbor Freight Jacks. These things are actually awesome, by the way. Check it out. So, get this thing up all the way, and it's still safe to get under since we have the axle jack stand it. So, now that we have this thing up, we can actually put stuff in. Yes. All right, now this next step is something that we also need to pay mind to. There are these two small brackets that come with the hardware kit. They are labeled with an L and an R for left and right. Now, that's looking at the rear of the vehicle. Anyway, this is the kit that allows you to reinstall that wiring that we removed from the original bracket underneath there. There is a little hole here that that factory clip just right into and then this attaches to the bracket for the bottom of the airbag so everything goes back in the factory location i mean not factory but close it makes everything work it's nice that this is included to put everything back up out of the way and secure all right now this is why it's so important to relax the suspension on your truck you need as much room between the bottom of the frame rail and the top of the axle as you can you can tell by my labored breathing that this was a bear to put in here because uh you know it's it's a maze of stuff under here that you got to work around so just take your time fight with it use a pry bar do whatever you need to do but now that this thing is in you can tell how important it is to make sure that these brackets are in the correct location you can see the distance here between the leaf spring and the airbag if you have this wrong it just won't fit so this is a big deal so once we have everything roughly in place the next step is to use this little bracket that i told you guys about this thing like i said it's marked left and right that goes right over the bottom of the bracket, and then this is what this wiring harness will clip into. Take one of these fully threaded carriage bolts, go down through that bracket, and it slides to allow room for to put your bottom one in. Use that little auxiliary bracket for the wiring clip, put that on over it, and then we're going to take one of these flange nuts, run this thing up, and tighten down that assembly first. Well, don't tighten it. Snug it down, but don't tighten it. We'll go back and tighten it later because, like I said, when you're going to need to be able to move it. So just snug it down with your fingers, and then that's what gives us room to clip in our factory wiring harness. Now, once you have that thing snug down, you just clip in your wiring harness, and then, I guess if you brought, there you go, take that same carriage bolt, the fully threaded one, throw it through the other side, and we're ready to put the bottom, like, cradle saddle bracket on. Now this guy here, there's only one way you can do it. Make sure that this cutout here sits on the axle. I'm going to put this over top of our carriage bolts. And this is why I mentioned not to tighten it first. Because you may need to wiggle this thing left and right to make sure that it's in the right spot. Now another thing to pay mind to is whenever you're tightening this thing down, don't just crank one bolt all the way because then that bottom bracket will get like out of level and it won't want to tighten down straight. So run it up by hand until you have an even amount of this carriage bolt sticking out of the bottom of both sides. 
and then we can go through and tighten everything properly. So now that we have everything about where we need it, we can go ahead and reinstall our factory brake line onto the lower airbag bracket. They supply smaller bolts in the kit because the factory one is too long and it'll inter interfere with what's going on here. So we take the new smaller one from the kit, it's still a 13 mil. We'll just start that in by hand and run it in. There we go. That's probably my favorite part about this kit is that it allows everything to go back in its factory location. And in case I forgot to mention, this bottom wire that we're doing, you know, that bracket that we put in specifically for the wire clip, make sure that that wire goes behind the rear carriage bolt. That is the most relaxed and easy way for this thing to go and it doesn't pinch anything. It's actually really nice. And now before we go any further, we're going to go ahead and install the passenger side also because since we have the suspension relaxed, we're going to do that now. And then we're going to bring the truck back down on top of the airbag to allow us to put the top hardware on. So I'll meet you back over here when we're ready for that part. All right, now that we have all of the lower components installed, not torqued yet, but installed, we have the bracket for the wiring harness put on, we have the lower saddles put on, and we've lowered the suspension back down onto everything. So right now it's sitting at stock ride height, minus being on jack stands. But that brings the frame and that factory jounce bumper down into that top bracket. So it'll make it significantly easier to put the upper hardware on. Now there is this funny U-bolt looking thing that goes around that jounce bumper and into the top bracket. And then there's an even funnier bolt that goes up over the frame rail to hold everything. Actually, there's a little uh, modification that I'm going to do to that one, but uh, you'll see when we get there. All right, so this is the bracket that I was talking about. The way that this works is it would be just a normal U-bolt, but it would be like impossible to get it in between the bed and the frame. So they made it in two pieces. You see here we have a fancy weird looking eye bolt and then another bolt. They slide together to create a U-bolt to hold that top bracket. However... I'm a fabricator. I'm a metal guy. I am not crazy about the fact that this eye bolt is just bent. So I'm going to take the time and put a little weld on there so I know that this thing is never going to come apart. Like I said, this is totally up to you, but I'm going to do it. We're going to go ahead, pull out the old welding machine here, and uh, just put a little tack on that thing. I'm not going to go crazy with it, but... Uh, I have the ability to do it, why not? So in case you guys are wondering here, just a regular MIG weld. I'm running an 035 wire, 7525 shielding gas, and uh, we're just gonna pop that thing in there, nothing crazy. And that's all she wrote. Quite literally all it takes. That thing is a solid hunk now, ain't no way it's coming apart. You guys see the difference here? This is the way it was, this is the way it is now. Now you guys see all the fuzzies on there? If you know anything about welding, that means that this thing is galvanized. So it is zinc coated. Make sure that you're doing this in a ventilated area because this stuff will make you sick if you breathe it in. Now this little bit, I'm not particularly concerned about. Usually if you're welding zinc or galvanized, you would want to grind that off first and then weld it so you don't get this. But for this little bit, nah. Uh, this is one of those do as I say, not as I do kind of things, but you get the point here. I'm going to go ahead and zap the other one, and we will continue with your regularly scheduled install. Well, that about wraps up the fabrication for this project. Like I said, you don't need to do this, but if you have the ability, why not? If you blew the money to have one of these things in your shop, use it. I mean, yeah, it looks cool sitting there whenever you're drinking beer with your buddies, but it looks even cooler whenever you're using it. Now we're gonna head on over here to the hardware bin. These come with washers for that eye bolt setup, but I'm not pleased with them about the size or the thickness. So I got myself a grade eight assortment here and uh, I'm gonna give myself something a little bit better. Now I don't know about gins guys, but me personally, I feel like you can make anything better just like we did here. So now this thing is fully welded. I know that eyelet's never coming apart and I got a grade eight oversized washer for that eyelet. This thing is about as solid as it ever could be now. I'm way happier with this. Like I said, your choice. You don't need to do this with the kit. I just wanted to. Now we can actually go in there and start putting stuff together. 
Well, now that we're back under here again, with significantly less headroom because we lowered the body of the truck, <laughs> we're going to take one of these U-bolts here, and you guys will notice how it fits right around the top of that factory jounce bumper location. And that's kind of like what squares this whole thing up. Now, you're going to have to do a little bit of wiggling, but there's not much to it. That's why I recommended lowering the body back down onto this so it kind of like compresses it and holds it together for you. Once you get it started, simply throw a couple nuts on there and we can suck it the rest of the way through. Now, don't go through and tighten, tighten this because we still got to put that top U-bolt on. All right, guys, we had to pause for technical difficulties. I ran into an issue that I have run into before, but I was hoping it wasn't going to be for this one. If you guys did see the last video about putting the B&W flip gooseneck in this truck, it's awesome. I love that hitch. Well worth it. However, the top U-bolt thing that we just welded needs to go exactly where the rear bracket for that gooseneck hitch is i got it to work but man it takes uh some prying and banging and this and that it's in there i'll show you what it looks like but it's in there so here we are in the driver pass or driver rear well here you can see there is the bracket for the gooseneck and then there is the bolt that needs to go in the top bracket for the airbag Man, it was a lot of prying and banging and this and that, but I promise it works. You just got to work for it. So if you have this particular setup and you plan on doing this, just know the factory kit will work. It just takes effort. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the particulars, but we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side, and then I'll bring you back in whenever we're doing our final assembly, tightening up and putting on the airlines. All right, guys, so we got everything done here. This is what our final result is. So you can see this U-bolt here that goes around the factory jounce bracket. And then this is the bolt we are fighting with. You see the lack of space here between the gooseneck hitch and this cross member? That's right where that bolt has to go, that one that we welded. But with enough cussing and hammering and fighting, we got it in there. Same thing on this side. This one was a little bit better, but still a real bear. And this is what you're looking for when it's all said and done. Now that the hard work of this job is complete, honestly, that was more difficult than it should have been, but it's my own fault. I mean, I put an aftermarket hitch in. This is the stuff that you have to deal with. So you just work around it and make it work. But all the hardware is done. Everything's tightened down. All the torque specs are in here. I mean, it's different for your make model, so make sure you refer to your manual for your specs. But honestly, really the important ones are the brackets on top of the airbag because of that brass nut that I was talking about. Either way, now that all that's done, everything's in, it's where it needs to be. The last step is actually running our airlines and that heat shield for the exhaust pipe for the passenger airbag. But this, there is no right or wrong way to run the airlines. This is where your artistic side comes out. And uh, you can put it wherever you want. The only limitation you have is the length of the airlines. So whether you choose to use the plastic ones that come with the kit, or if you upgraded to the stainless steel kit, which I keep reiterating, it is so worth it. But you can put these things absolutely wherever you want. It's just limited by the length. Me personally, uno memento, por favor. Like I mentioned, this will be, I've done this several times on different trucks, and I put these things right here underneath the license plate lights. That way, it's easy to get to whenever you're hooking up a trailer. You're right here anyway, and then you can judge the height of your truck. And it's super obliviously obvious to whoever does this. This one is for the left side airbag. This one is for the right side airbag. Now, here's where we come to a conundrum that a lot of people agree and or disagree about. Whenever you run these airlines, obviously you need one line per bag, but to T or not to T? And by that, I mean, do you put both of these lines together so you only have one Schrader valve back here that fills up both of the bags evenly? Or do you keep them separate and have one line each? 
allow me to explain my stance on this. Like I said, I have been a heavy truck mechanic in the past, so I'm very familiar with air systems and how they work. Obviously, this is a different beast, but I am familiar with air suspension. Follow me for a second. Imagine you have something really tall in the bed of your truck. Let's just say that you have a 20-foot piece of granite, okay? I know, I know. Just hear me out. So I have a really high center load. If I'm going around a bend, centrifugal force is going to take over. This whole thing is going to want to lean towards the outside of the bend. Naturally, that's going to put more compression on the outside airbag, right? Following me so far. If I have these bags teed together, meaning the air is shared from one bag to the other, this bag will want to compress with that load and it will push the air out of that bag into the other one. And that will exacerbate that lean. It will make it even worse because the air is coming out of the compressed one and going into the uncompressed one. So the lean that's already happening is going to be worsened by having your lines together. Now, there are ways around doing this. You can put check valves in lines here, but that really overcomplicates this for, honestly, I feel no reason. So this is why I choose to do the one line per side. So whatever I put in the left bag is there, and it's there forever. Whatever I put in the right bag is there, and it's there forever. Each bag is its own circuit. So you can push down on one as hard as you want to, and it's not going to affect the other one whatsoever. And not to mention, if you have some wonky, like, off-kilter load in the bed of your truck, you can favor one side or the other to get this thing riding flat and level again. Like I said, this is my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. But I have spent a great deal of my life around heavy trucks and air suspension, and I feel that I understand how they work well. And this is what I choose to do. You do you. But this is just my stance on it. Now, without further ado, I know I have the gift of gab here, but we're just going to start running lines. And like I said, this is totally up to you where and how you do it. But uh, I'm going to start running some stuff. And since you're not going to be able to see through my head, I'm just going to do it and then show you what it looks like afterward. I guess just one last little quick thing before I actually put these in so you guys can physically see these before I put them in. This is just, I feel... 100% better than the polyurethane tubing that comes with it. Not to say that it's not good, but with anything in life, there's usually a better option. These things, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell here, they take what we call a JIC fitting, meaning that these things don't need any thread tape, any sealant, or anything. It's just a metal-to-metal -metal connection, and these are generally found in hydraulic systems. You guys know anything about hydraulics? We're talking thousands of psi of a liquid if they're good enough for that it's good enough for 50 psi in the airbags on my pickup truck so like i said this is uh i don't know about five feet or so of braided stainless line as opposed to the 10 feet or so of polyurethane either way it's the same thing it just takes another fitting on the other end so we can put that uh, schrader valve in but now that you guys have seen these things couldn't recommend more i'm actually gonna do it now i promise i'm done talking <laughs> So here we are with those stainless lines connected. You can tell here, I got it connected onto the swivel fitting on top. This takes a 9 16 wrench. Run up here, zip tie to that U-bolt, zip tie to the wiring harness here, so I'm sure that there isn't any chafing going on. And then I ran through the hole in the frame rail there. Going down through the frame horn, all the way out the back of the hitch. And that leaves me about a foot of extra to play with. And it's gonna go right there underneath the tag light. I did almost the exact same thing on the passenger side in the fitting on the top of the bag. Zip tied up to that U-bolt in through the rail here. And this is another huge bonus to getting these braided stainless lines is that you get that abrasion resistance. So I'm not afraid of having that line there. Go down through the frame rail and it comes out the end of the frame right over the hitch. And same thing, we got about a foot to play with and it'll go right in there underneath the tag light. We effectively have our lines ran. One of the last steps, I swear, we're getting to the end here. We still got to do the heat shield yet. Don't forget to do that. But since we're on the airlines here, I have my Schrader valve with that male JIC fitting that will hook up to our stainless lines. 
And according to my handy gandy drill bit gauge here, we need a 5 16 pre-drill to put the stud through the bumper here, and then we can lock it down with these jam nuts. And I don't know, I'm looking at egress under there. I'm thinking somewhere around here-ish. That way it'll make it easier for me to get to. And if you put them down here, you run the risk of stepping on them whenever you get them in here. So I'm thinking right around here-ish. Now this next part here is kind of a guessing game. You gotta judge where you want things between the inside and the outside. But like I mentioned, this is totally up to you. You put these wherever you want. Just because I'm putting them here doesn't mean that you need to. So make sure that there's plenty of room behind it. Take our 5 16 pre-drill here. Send her home, Happy. There you go. That's all it takes. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And do your best to match these up. You know, aesthetics. Take pride in your work. So I know you guys were a little far away whenever I did that. With this particular model, that's about exactly where I put these. You know, they may not be exact from left to right, but uh, I think it's pretty darn close. Now we're going to install these air fittings, and they're pretty self-explanatory. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the kit. There's two jam nuts on this long neck here. You're going to want to run one down, leave it on there. Put yourself one of these star lock washers. And then a stainless steel flat washer on top of that star. Do your best to try to weasel your oversized hand in there. There you go. Then we can capture it on the other side. And then the second nut that we took off originally, put that on top to secure everything. Do the same thing on the other one. Now these studs are pretty long, but since there's two nuts, one on the back and one on the front, we can adjust this thing in and out. So I suggest leaving just enough on the outside to put your cap on, plus a little bit. So. We're gonna leave these stick out about a half an inch or so and crank everything down. I'll bring you in a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Now here's what you're left with on the outside. So this is what you're gonna see. You want enough studs sticking out here. So whenever we put the valve cap on, we can tighten it without bottoming out on the nut. So that's about perfect. And then this is what you're left with on the outside of your vehicle. I know it's not the most aesthetically pleasing, but let's be honest, this is a work truck. This is here for a reason. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty pleased with it, especially with those black caps on there. It blends in rather well with the bumper. I suppose if you want to, you can go over this stainless hardware with some like black model paint or something to like blend it in, but yeah, you do you. This is really nice. It's uh, waist level. It's easy to get to, so you just take uh, your tire filler upper thing and shh, real easy to get to. I, like I said, you put it wherever you want, but I've done this particular one before and it works out great. The only thing we have left to do is hook up the airlines to the back of these fittings and put that heat shield on. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think that could have turned out any nicer. Take a look at that. The line comes right out of the frame rail there. Oh, maybe. Right there over top of the hitch. And there's just enough slack that it fits right in the back of our fitting perfectly. And we have the exact same thing over here on the passenger side. So in the bag here with the original polyurethane tubing that I'm not using, there is another kit specifically for your heat shields. We have a galvanized piece of tin, two big old mamma jamma hose clamps to hold that thing onto the pipe. And then if you choose to use the polyurethane hose, there is a little heat shield thing that would go around this also same thing to guard it from the exhaust but if you're using the stainless ones you don't need that so the way that they want you to do this here in the book is that you just take this thing bend both of these back roughly at a 45 degree angle then take half of this distance and bend another 45 degree angle that way these are the things that will attach to your exhaust pipe 
and then that gives you an air gap in between the exhaust and your air bag. So this is pretty much what you're shooting for. I mean, we're going to have to bend it a little bit once we get under there to match the radius of the exhaust pipe, but you guys can figure this out. I promise there's nothing to it. So now I got that heat shield installed there. You guys can see what it looks like after it's put on. Super simple. You just need to bend it and shape it to where you need it to go, and you put it right there in between the exhaust and the air bag. Tighten down those clamps, and that's it. So guys, the work is done. The last thing the book calls out for is fill the bags with 50 PSI and go around with some soapy water. Yeah, shout out to Chris Fix there. Soapy water on all of your connections, both sides of the airlines, you know, the fitting going into the bag and heck, just spray down the bag, you know, you're going to find an air leak. Now's the time to do it. So we're just going to remove the caps on our brandy new uh, fittings here. And you guys, check out the wide angle here. You guys will see the truck lift whenever this happens. That's the whole point. It separates the body from the axle. There you go. There's 51 pounds in the left. Fifty-one and a half in the right. So now we can just go over and spray everything, make sure she ain't leaking, and we're good. A little spritzy spritz. This is nothing. Just Dawn dish soap and water. Yeah. Spray our fittings up here underneath the bumper. Good, good, good. Left airbag, no bubbles, right airbag, no bubbles, I don't know about you guys, but I think this is a bloody success. Whew. So guys, cool. I am super happy with the install. I know I had a little trouble there with that bracket and the gooseneck hitch, but whenever you modify vehicles, this is stuff that you run into. So at least if you have this particular thing, this truck, and you wanna do this setup, you can anticipate what you're getting into. Because these things are still so new, there's not a lot of material out there on the old interweb about doing stuff like this. I mean, yes, you can get this truck as a factory option with a gooseneck, but I don't know, this one didn't. And not to mention, I prefer doing it myself anyway. So whenever I'm yanking something down the road, I have the confidence that it's done right because I did it. I know all those bolts are torqued. I know everything is Loctited and everything is good to my satisfaction. So guys, the only thing left to do is simply put your truck back together. Reinstall the spare tire, put your rear tires back on, get this thing off the stands and go for a cruise. Pat yourself on the back and enjoy the fact that you did the job yourself and you know it's done right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, check out all the links in the description. I will put everything that you need to do this particular task. And I will also link the two other videos for installing the gooseneck hitch and installing the factory wiring harness in the bed of this truck for a gooseneck or a fifth wheel trailer. So like I said, hopefully you enjoyed and this gives you the confidence to do it yourself. So we will see you guys next time.